welcoming to the stage Sarah O'Grattan to share her story. It's great that you're all here and, and it, you know, you would, I'd like to share some experiences with you. Uh, since my PLC Sydney days, I studied economics and law at university. I had part-time jobs in both before becoming a strategy management consultant uh, at one of the international consulting firms. Um, I've become a local government councillor and uh, I'm from the Northern Beaches, so of course I'm independent. I've uh, become a business and uh, not-for-profit leader, most recently working as the Chief Operating Officer of UNICEF Australia, uh, a great, big, enormous global charity that looks after the rights of children. I've become a wife and I've become a mother of three girls. So how, how did I become uh, a careers with humanitarian agency, elected community leader, making the C-suite, so I've got, and, but also having time for fun, friends and, and family, and of course holidays. Holidays are very, very important. Um, so here's some insights as to what worked for me, and uh, I think they're readily transferable for all of you as you start to go on your journeys to become. And uh, because I'm a consultant, I of course need a framework. So uh, I've got some slides, so hopefully the, the team can bring them up. And the seek, my framework is B-U-S-Y. The secret to becoming is by being busy. B is for brave. U is for understanding yourself. S is for strengths, and in particular doubling down on your strengths. And Y is for saying yes to opportunities. But have you ever had that feeling in your tummy where it clenches and you feel really, really nervous, nauseous, your breathing gets really fast, you want to pull a you know, blanket over your head rather than get up and face that exam, or, or when, hey, you're doing a TED talk for the first time and uh, you're really uncertain about how it's actually going to go, especially after these amazing speakers that we've had here today. Do you do it? Do you grit your teeth and say, come on, you've got this, I've got this? Well, that's bravery. So I guess what I'm trying to say, what we need to really do is take chances and, and back yourself and even experience failure on your journey to become. Because taking a chance requires this sort of bravery. And, and do step up after a failure. Because if you don't ask or you don't try, you're never going to get words up there from Winston Churchill where he said success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that really counts so to become something or to achieve something or to realize our dreams we need to take chances and we need to be able to cope with that uncertainty and we can do that and by being brave just just like that little girl so this, the second letter in my busy framework, U, is for understanding yourself. So picture this, time travel back, 1988, there's no mobile phones, there's no internet, you're finishing up year 10 and you decide to go on a school exchange program to Japan. That was me at 15 and I headed off for the summer holidays to Japan where I stayed with a traditional Japanese family, uh, multi-generational living. I was completely out of my comfort zone. And here I was, a long way. You couldn't even make a phone call back to your family because it would have cost just too much money. So you were totally on your own in this foreign, foreign place. Um, and anyway, in, in the evenings after dinner with this family, we, my Japanese family and I, we bonded over the game of Uno. And uh, it was freezing cold, it was the middle of winter, you know, and we'd sit under all of these cold mats. And, uh, but the rule for this that we instigated was whoever lost the game of Uno had to do the washing up. Now, Japan is a really patriarchal society. And uh, so, but one day, or Torsan, dad, he lost. He lost Uno. And I'm saying, right, straight away, off to the washing up. You're doing the washing up. And uh, he just laughed. And Okasan, mother, she just completely flipped out. She was horrified. No, 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 you know, he can't do the washing up. He can't do the washing up. And, uh, and uh, he, you know, he, Torsan was laughing and laughing. And eventually he did it. He went and did the washing up. And I was, I was this strong, young feminist. And uh, 
I had a very strong sense of justice and I was determined to evangelise his family and let my Japanese sisters know that they didn't have to wait hand and foot on men and men were perfectly capable of doing the washing up. But uh, these experiences in Japan for me as a teenager really took me out of my comfort zone. And, uh, but it also enabled me to understand myself, who I was, what was important to me, and, and also that I was able to influence others, and that, yes, I definitely was a very strong feminist. And then uh, the following school, and I went to PLC, and then went to university, and I studied economics and law, and that opened my eyes to a whole lot of new worlds and experiences. I saw large disparities of economic circumstance. I had friends from different cultures, friends with different beliefs, different sexual preferences, which was all a big eye-opener for this girl from North West Sydney. And, uh, but these have all helped foster in me a sort of a strong sense of social justice and the importance of inclusion and kindness when you're dealing with people, when you're leading people. So I encourage you all to think about who you are What's, it, what's important to you? What are your values? What, what drives you? Who or what might you become? <clears throat> university was a time of enormous personal growth for me. I earned two degrees and a university medal, but the most important lessons for me were understanding my values, who, who I was. And in the words there up with Aristotle on the screen, if they're big enough to read, is knowing yourself is the beginning of wisdom, of all wisdom. So for you, having, having experiences, travel, meet new people, volunteer for things, work, you know, get yourself outside of the bubble that you're already in, and that is where you're going to learn about yourself, your values, your passions, what drives you. So academic success helps a lot, but... It's the non-academic experiences that you have that taught me who I am and, and guided who I've become. So by understanding who you are, you will be better placed on your road to become. Okay, so we've discussed brave and understand you. The third letter of becoming starts with S, strengths, and in particular, doubling down on your strengths. So finding a successful career or a life purpose is going to be doing something that you're really good at and hopefully something that you really love. And while it's important for us to work on things and improve things that we find boring or difficult, for me that was physics, <laughs> but focusing on our strengths will be more encouraged, more confident. And we can't be good at everything and no one is perfect. So my advice is to take a shortcut and just double down on your strengths. Of course, you might need some time to find them, and you should always try and learn new things. And focus, you know, if you're focusing on becoming an accountant, for instance, when you were really an artist, it's going to be a really hard slog. And unless you can find a job that's for an accountant at an art gallery, you're likely to be pretty dissatisfied. So what does that mean in practice? Firstly, whilst you should always listen to your parents and your teachers and your friends, don't let them make decisions for you. I'm going to give you an example. This is my middle daughter and she is currently doing her HSC. So her loves are English and the performing arts. And this week she has done three major works. Insane? Arguably yes. Each of her projects just blows my mind with her creativity. But she just still doesn't know what she wants to become or what she wants to study at university. So I'm guilty of suggesting that she read law because that's what smart kids should do and, you know, she'll get a good job. But if she is to double down on her strengths, then it's something creative. It's something in theatre or movies or, or dance or directing. And as her mum, I need to back off. And even if I can see that it's going to be a hard road ahead for her. Secondly, great success and impact can come from employing your strengths in new and different ways. Ways you hadn't imagined before. 
For example, back in 2021, we're in the lockdowns of 2021, and my oldest daughter was doing her HSC. And this cohort, they finished school at the end of term two and didn't know that they would never go back to school. And from then they were in this relentless cycle of in, being in their bedrooms, studying, all the time. There was no letting off steam, there was no escape, there was no change. They, they didn't get to see their mates and they were literally in their room on Zoom. And I'm, you were all at school at that point and you know how bad it was being in year 10 as you probably were there or, or earlier. But alongside all of this uncertainty, you know, the HSC trials kept being delayed and delayed and delayed. And it was horrific and some kids didn't cope at all. And then one day the HSC exams were officially pushed back um, by a month, so they, they weren't even going to be finishing until December. And uh, a student contacted me with my counsellor Grattan hat on and uh, she wanted some help in uh, making a change and getting heard. And I, I wasn't quite sure where to start, but, but UNICEF, in particular Article 12 of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, says it's vitally important to listen to young people and for them to have a say in matters that affect them. So I listened, and uh, this girl Hannah and, and my daughter Emily, we got together on, on, the, on the phone and we, we had a chat about what might be some of the things that we, we could look at, what, you know, do we have some ideas... And then we realised we were going to make a much bigger impact if we could broaden the group. And so we worked our networks, made lots of phone calls, and the next afternoon we had a Zoom call with the captains of 20 high schools on the Northern Beaches. We got everybody that Saturday afternoon on this, on this big Zoom call. And suddenly these young leaders, they had agency. Instead of feeling helpless, they had some hope. And we collaborated and ideated and together the students came up with a, a, a plan, uh, an eight-point plan for us to put to the New South Wales government. And uh, this plan included having a study bubble so that two to three friends could get together. And, you know, there was a singles bubble. We thought there should be a study bubble for the HSC students. And we wanted to be able to ask for having a, things like a celebration at the end of the year so the kids could go to their, their formal. So we doubled down on our collective strengths, such as listening, building consensus, collecting data, working with our networks, we wrote a press release, and we collaborated to reach out to government and media contacts. And within two weeks, we managed to get Zoom meetings with cabinet ministers, federal and state MPs, the mayor, and even the education minister. That was a hard one to get, but we got her in the end. And the government listened. And to all of these student pleas, and we managed to achieve seven of the eight things on that plan. The, the, the eighth thing was trying to get the HSC exams cancelled and the education minister just said no. But we did manage to get up the study bubble, which became the friendship bubble for all students on New South Wales in those September school holidays. And so that was just born out of, the, out of this group, this, this girl Hannah and my daughter Emily and, and their contacts on the northern beaches. The survey we put out ended up going... 6,000 students across the country from Norfolk Island to Byron Bay and out to Broken Hill filled in this survey um, and, and the kids were going through a lot. So we were really, really proud of that. And so by doubling down on our strengths, we had this great success and this tangible impact for the 2021 HSC cohort. So as Steve Jobs so famously said, have the courage to follow your heart and your intuition. So they somehow already know what you might become. So to become successful, it's going to be likely doing something you're really good at or something that you love, as you'll have greater confidence and be really encouraged by your success. All right, the last letter, Y. Um, but the Y in busy stands for saying yes to opportunities. So some people have a really rigid plan for their lives, their careers, their studies... But, but not me, actually. So in, in my career in life, I've just focused on being flexible and taking advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. This has taken me onto paths and directions that I've never imagined and has helped who I've become today. Saying yes put me on the stage for the law review at university 
and that meant I met some of the most fabulous people who made university a joy and are still dear friends of mine today. We're all having our 50s at the moment, just to put an age on it. Not a boomer, a Gen Xer. So, right. um, saying yes to a university exchange in Montreal, has cre in Canada, has created a network, a global network of friends of mine, and one of whom is my daughter's French fairy godmother. Saying yes to a job with a university professor whilst I was finishing my degree gave me the edge on landing a job at an international consulting firm. Saying yes to a move to London for six months resulted in me meeting my now husband. And we've got three kids. Saying yes to becoming the PNC president at my kids' school has put me on a path to becoming an elected local councillor and a qualified company director. Saying yes to a consulting gig at UNICEF resulted in a five-year stint there as the Chief Operating Officer of that incredible organisation and the opportunity to meet and work with people all over the world. So each opportunity required me to be brave and to step into the unknown and to risk failure. But saying yes each time has changed the direction of my life. But you can't just sit back and wait for people just to offer you things. That just doesn't happen. You've got to be proactive on your journey. So how might you be proactive? How might you be curious? Are you open to sliding door moments, things you mightn't have expected that might take you down a new or different path that really opens up opportunities for you as you progress through your life? Which way might you go? So overly planning your life might, and your career might unwittingly put blinkers on and you might miss out on big, unexpected chances that come along. So be curious, be proactive when cool opportunities come up that aren't on the plan. Don't be afraid. Take a deep breath like that little girl and just say yes. And as Richard Branson said, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity but you're not sure how to do it, you can say yes and then learn how to do it later. So what will you become? What are your dreams? Remember to keep busy, be brave, understand yourself, double down on your strengths, say yes to opportunities, and your dreams of what you want are just waiting to be realised. B-U-S-Y. Thank you. <laughs>